very much, uh, program director and uh, leaders of the youth and students and uh, young parliamentarians and uh, young senators. Um, I'm very happy to be here and always very happy to speak to the future of the African continent because that's where I come from. I come from what we called um, the Young Pioneers. The Young Pioneers was an organization of children in the ANC. It used to be called Masupatsila. That's where we were taught struggle songs. That's where we were taught how to recite poems. That's where we were inculcated with political discipline and culture. And then from there, I went to be a student leader in COSAS, what is called South Af Congress of South African Students. It's an organization that is aligned to the ANC for pre-tertiary students. And then I became the youth leader of the ANC and a leader of the ANC. So there's no, there's no step I've missed in my life of politics. Um, I've led the ANC in my own right, not through the youth league, and, um, which means I've led a ruling party. So I can teach you politics of ruling party since of the incumbency, and I can teach you politics of the opposition. So I know both. I've been in the ruling party and I've been in the, I'm now in the opposition. One thing that you should know as young people is that you've got a license, a permit to make mistakes. So you must never in your youth seek to be perfect. Because once you seek to be perfect, you cease to be the youth. You are an elder. So there is no difference between you and Raila. There ought to be a difference. When they say you are a leader of the youth in Raila Odinga's party, there must be a difference between the youth in Raila Odinga's party and the leadership of the mother body. So the mother body has got a duty to always call you to order. So, because you've got energy, you must demand that things must be done and they must be done now. And the elders will always drag their feet because they've been there like you, being impatient and then deciding, ah, these things are what they are, in anyway, they won't change. You must come and push them to change. You must never, ever allow elders to make mistakes without you, the young ones, calling them out. So when the elections were run here in Kenya, and results were announced, there was a threat of violence. And we know what happened in the previous elections here in Kenya, where people died because of elections. Why should elections in Africa be associated with death? Because democracy is not death. Democracy, by all means, is a right to live and live a beautiful life. And most of the comrades in the Comrade Raila Odinga's party were not happy with me when I said, you're not going to do violence in the name of elections and in the name of Honorable Raila Odinga. Because no one must die after elections. Even when Raila Odinga is robbed and cheated, with clear evidence, no one must die. Robbed with evidence, daylight, no one must die. Why should people die? Because you are robbed elections. There are systems in Kenya where dispute can be made, and then once the final arbiter makes a final decision, whether we are happy with it or we are not happy with it, we must accept it. Those clowns in America, they rob each other all the time. Huh? I mean, uh, 
uh, uh, Trump was feeling like he's being robbed. He even said, stop counting, stop counting, stop the counting. Because he said he, he was being robbed. Then they went to storm whatever they stormed, but they came back to their senses. No, 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 no. It's not done like that in America where we storm things and people die in the name of elections. So if we say we are equal like them, we want to be at the same level with them, violence is not an option on the basis of electoral outcome. Must never be. It, why is violence not an option? It's going to be black on black violence. And you can't say you are a Pan-Africanist and be willing to kill another African based on elections. If it is meant to be for President Raila Odinga to become president of Kenya one day, no one, no amount of cheating will stop that. They can succeed now. It will eventually happen. So those who are not happy with me say, get out of Kenya politics. Kenya, this is not South Africa. This is my home. This is my politics. Kenya's politics are my politics. The same way the politics of South Africa are yours. Any destabilization in any corner of Africa affects us. I celebrate the victory of Niger as if it's mine. Because anything that drives the French out of our continent is worth celebrating by all of us. And that's why I celebrate that. Now, the, 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 the ones of President Ruto are also not happy with me. Because I said, why would you say you are a Pan-Africanist? Because Pan-Africanism is necessitated by the fact that we are an oppressed nation. We are a dejected nation. We are a rejected nation as Africans. That everyone else who is rejected should find sympathy in us because we know what being rejected means. Now, Palestine, Palestinians are being rejected, are being isolated, they are being killed on their own land, the same way the Mau Mau rebellion heroes were killed by occupiers, the same way the Bambata rebellion uh, heroes were killed by the occupiers, the same way people were killed in South Africa during apartheid. President comes and says, I'm with Israel. How do you say that? An Israel that is bombing children, in hospitals, pregnant women in hospitals. How do you say you're with Israel that bombs a refugee camp? What happened to an international law? A president can say a lot of things and say nothing at the end. President Ruto has got a platform to speak and not say anything on Palestine, on Israel, on it. He can, that thing, it is called a diplomatic language. Yes. So you stand up and then speak like that about pregnant women who are dying, and then you say, we must keep quiet, because if we speak, we are attacking the president. No. No. A pan-Africanist, when he sees children being murdered, a pan-Africanist, when he sees occupiers killing, the rightful owners of the land can never sympathize with such people. Palestinians can't give me anything. They can't buy me. Even if they wanted, they, they are not in no position to give anyone anything. They are in a difficult situation. At the age of nine and ten, police raided my house. Male police found us sleeping. They were looking for young boys and men. In my house, there were no men. There was only women. My grandmother had nine children. Eight of them were women. When they searched a full house full of people, they couldn't find men. And those male police had to strip off my mother, take off her clothes in front of me for them to confirm if she's a real woman. If you lived that experience, you will know what the Palestinians are going through. Forceful removal is what we lived in South Africa. We know what it means. When you wake up tomorrow, yesterday you had all houses, land, everything, tomorrow you have nothing. That's what we see now in Palestine. 
So many people, 9,000 people killed in weeks. No international warrant of arrest has been issued. The war between Ukraine and Russia has taken only 1.5. 1,500 people died in Ukraine, 9,000 in Palestine. Yet there is a warrant of arrest against President Putin. He has never bombed a hospital. He has never bombed a refugee camp. Let me tell you, even if the president of Hamas runs into a refugee camp, you have no reason to bomb a refugee camp. Once he runs into a refugee camp, that's the end of it. You're like, guys, you have to stop. We have to find another means to go and take him out there. Once he runs into a hospital, you have to stop. Because here is a pregnant woman who walks into a hospital. She's going to give birth. She doesn't know there is a Hamas president there. She's not part of the people who are raised that the Hamas president must go into a hospital. She gets killed for no reason. And then President Ruto says, I'm with Israel. <laughs> and then you, the young ones in his party, don't stand up to say, but no, it's not done. It's not done. We did that in the ANC and we got expelled for that. And we regret, no, and we don't have any regret for doing that. The elders have got a potential of destroying the future of young people. That's why they say they've got uh, Africa 2060 vision. But they won't be there in 2060, so they, I don't know what they are talking about. So you, if you are to be the youth, and the youth that must be taken serious, you must from time to time call your elders to order. That's how Africa is going to realize its potential. These elders have destroyed our continent through dictatorship, through family uh, arrangements, and the youth kept quiet. South Africa was liberated by the youth. When we have time, we'll share that story. The ANC in 1940s was dead until Mandela came in as the youth and Walter Sisul and Oar Tambo developed what they called the program of action that revived the ANC and ANC adopted it in 1949. ANC was a sweetheart organization which used to fight through letters to London. This youth said we must take up arms and fight now. The ANC agreed in 1949. That's what made the ANC to be what it is. When they got arrested in the 60s, down the line in the 60s, Steve Biko emerged was a young person, black consciousness. That led to 1976. That was the youth. What O.R. Tambo said to the youth of South Africa in the 80s, render South Africa ungovernable and unworkable. The youth did that. In 1985 and 1986, South Africa had a permanent protest every day to a point where martial law was declared state of emergency twice in one year. Because they declared the first one, the youth were saying, we don't care, do what you want to do. They had to declare another one because they thought the youth didn't hear. But they heard and they were defiant. And that's what brought 1994 because of the youth of the 80s. So the youth of Kenya can make Kenya politics to be what you want them to be. President Ruto is a new, you know, fresh air. Because, you know, it has always been like, it is has to go between uh, the Odingas and uh, uh, um, the former president, the Kenyatas. So when he came in, we're like, ah, we now are graduating the you know, what do you call it, family di uh, dynasty. We said the family dynasty arrangement is going away. We said this was a perfect Pan-Africanist. I'm not denouncing him as not being a Pan-Africanist. All I'm saying is stay true to what you are saying. It doesn't matter how many people are criticizing you or not. We still have a lot of hope in him. We still think that a right thing can be done. We need to de-dollarize. He said he's going to de-dollarize. We need to do away with the dollar. 
He said he's going to do away with the visas. We have to do away with the visas because Africa must be one. I must wake up. It's a four-hour flight from South Africa to here. I must wake up in South Africa and come and eat lunch here. And then in the afternoon, get into a plane, go back. So why should it be an issue? All of these visas, borders, must be done away. You know why they think we are xenophobic? We don't know each other. The more we do away with visas and borders and all of that, the more we are going to know each other and realize that we are actually one thing. There is nothing I'm seeing in this room which I've not seen in South Africa. There is nothing that suggests to me as I wake up, as I walk the streets of Nairobi, that suggests something different to me. It's my first time here. But it's as if I've been here many times. Why? Everything is familiar. These are my people. This is me. And, and to say you welcome me in Kenya is like welcoming me in Johannesburg. This is my home. Everywhere else in Africa, it's our home. You, the youth, must come and learn in South Africa. South Africans must come and learn here in, in our universities, cultural exchanges, and we must start to listen to the same music, watch the same movies, to do away with this Western imperialism that manifests itself through songs and television and movies and all of that. Nigerians have got it. They are on the right track. They need our support. How do we support them? We must join them in producing our own movies, our own music, and do away with Beyonce. I saw honorable member, Senator saying she saw Beyonce in Dubai and did not even get starstruck. That's, it's supposed to be like that. Uh, she's a human being. Uh, so we, we see one of our own. But you do that once you start having a self-respect to know that we are all are. We can do what they are doing. And we can even do it much more better than them because we are gifted nation. Remember, we're surviving under difficult conditions of colonialism and imperialism. Imagine as we survive under such condition, imagine if there were no such conditions. Would have been something else in this world. The world will be coming to nil here because of who we are. So many resources. 90% of the platinum of the world is found in Africa. You can look at what they do in Niger. They take over through a revolutionary coup, remove the French puppets, remove the French, and then increase the price of uranium by huge percentages because France was stealing it and buying it with low uh, uh, amounts of money. Then the boys come and say, no ways, you're going to pay market price. As a result, in less than a year, because of political decisiveness, that's what politics can do. In less than a year, Niger is now one of the biggest, the fastest growing economy in Africa because of the Revolutionary Act. So all these clowns that have colonized us don't need anything. They need a political will to say, this is us, this is where we stand. You either like us or you don't like us. But we are not going to trade with people who disrespect us. You are going to respect us and you are going to trade with us in this way. So that's you, the youth, who must radicalize the politics of the ruling party and the opposition and say anything that is not African, we're not going to associate with it. Including the, the coups that are happening in the continent where a French puppet is replaced by another French puppet, we must not support such nonsense. Like it happened in uh, uh, Guinea, Conakry, where a president is removed, we thought, oh, maybe there's something, only to realize there's another puppet of France. France, who's coming to take over the country without introducing anything drastic and revolutionary to turn around the Guinea Conakry, except to say, no, that president wanted to increase his years in office. That's why we stopped him. What is, what is revolutionary about that? 
Because this term of offices, of saying you serve two terms, uh, three terms, they are also not ours. They were imposed on us. So it must not look like when you say a person can't serve more than two terms, you think you are revolutionary. No. The people themselves will make their own setup of how they want to be ruled. That's fine. If they want two terms, it's okay. But don't speak like it's a God-given fact that we must serve only two terms because America said so or Britain said so. No. You remove a president in Guinea Conakry, replace it with a French puppet. You have a a war going on. So many, I said to you, 1,500 Ukraine, Russia, 9,000 in uh, uh, Palestine. It, uh, it's, I think it's more than that in DRC. In DRC, no one is saying anything because uh, uh, the barbarics, the monkeys are killing each other. We don't care. Let them finish each other there. It can't be. That if there is a different race being killed, there is noise. But when there are Africans being killed, it doesn't matter African on African or state on state, tribe on tribe. As long as there is death, people being killed, there can't be any amount of justification. No one has ever said anything about that death which is happening in TRC, where thousands are being killed. No one can say anything. You know why? It's an African life. It's a cheap life. I don't care about it. So we'll have this conversation one day. These guys are showing me the time there at the back. So I have to disappear. But thank you for coming. And then let's have the conversation continuing in whatever different forms. Don't worry about me. Whether they attack me or they don't attack me, I don't care about those things. When they sit alone, they know I'm telling the truth. And as long as they know that, I'm very happy about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Th thank you so much, uh, Honorable Malema. I just want to say that, uh, Honorable Malema, we are thankful. Thank you very much. And I'm a piano is very famous here, Honorable Malema. We like that. Uh, so we do a piece and then we do all of us. I also want to recognize Yasa Place, the sponsors of this event. Where is uh, Ken? Oh. This is Ken. Oh, thank you. Uh, no, no, we'll come. We'll come back. Yeah. 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 Godrich. Yeah. Are we all, or you want us to mix? Yeah. 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 Y